Once again, it's your boy Lobo with KBC. And today we're going to do a little market review. I picked up a set of markers from Timu. They called, what are they called again? Touch You Ink Lows. So, I want to tell you, man, when I cracked open this bag, it smelled like radio nuclear waste. I should have had a respirator on and some gloves. That ass, yo, the smell on this bag was horrible. But when you when you crack that sucker open, it was like that. Bang. I felt like a little kid. I ain't going to front. I ain't never had a marker set this large before. So in my mind, I was like, damn, look at the opportunities. You know how many black books I could do with this right here? Man, I got black book one-on-one videos for the next five years. No, I'm just talking to trash, but it's crazy. It was at least 25% of the set is all skin tones. So I was trying to sort everything out by color right there, but I ended up taking the whole bag and just dumping it on my dining room table and putting them all in these cases that I got from Ross. This case is pretty dope. I was gonna use them for something else, but I was like, yo, you know what? Those things sit in my garage, bang, let me throw the markers in there. That one whole side, that's all skin tones and browns. Yeah, you see that right there, 62 bucks. And also on this video, I'm gonna end up doing a, a name exchange. I got hit up in the comments by Louie. He's, an, he's another YouTuber that does black books, does graph. So he said, yo, do a Louie, and I'll do a Lobo. And I was like, I got you. Yeah, yo, I and you know what? I was pretty excited to do his name. That was my pop's nickname, God rest his soul. You know, his real name was Louis, but when we used to work, we used to end up we used to work in a warehouse in Jersey. And that's why everybody used to call him Louie. So this is actually the first Louie piece I ever did, you know? So that was pretty fresh. Yeah, yo, for 25 cent a marker, this thing is pretty badass. I ain't gonna front. And then the thing is too, I ain't even gonna get mad like when they dry out. Or like if my kids blow through these things, cause I could just end up getting another set. Mm -hmm. And if you go on Timu too, they got marker refills for these things. So I'm like, yo, that's crazy. You look at a Copic at Michael's, it's like six bucks, eight bucks, one Copic. Go on Amazon, look at that, the Ohoos. I want to try some more of those Ohoo's. I got a set, but I've, I've seen the brush tip ones. I want to try those out. But um, even the set of 200 costs 100 bucks. But right here, you're getting almost 300 markers for $60. And if you get a coupon, it brings it down even lower than that, you know? Yeah, no, the saturation on the markers, it was pretty good. So, you know, I had got some comments. People asked me about the Ohoo's. And I like the Ohoo's. I just got the chisel tip versions. I want to get the brush tip ones next. But for these things to be this low price, I ain't going to lie, man. This is a good deal. You know, especially for, I know alcohol based markers is not archival and won't last forever. But at the end of the day, this is black book. We just sketching, we just practicing things. Yeah, when you go get the chance, man, check out Louis' page, man. I just checked him out after he sent me that comment. And we went back and forth a couple of times. And I seen what he was doing. And his page is more tutorials. Like he's breaking it down a little better. Like like I said last time, I only been doing YouTube for about less than two months now. You know, but I got over 25 plus years of experience of doing grab. So he's breaking it down like he's like he's talking about how he got his extensions and his whips. Eventually, like once I get more comfortable with the platform and, and learn how to edit better and then do that, maybe I'll make a tutorial. Well, eventually I will, but as at this point right now, I'm just like talking BS and just getting to know this whole how like how this whole YouTube internet world world works, you know? <clears throat> so I was talking to my man's the other day and I, and I was putting him on to the color wheel you know back in the days that's one of the things you learned 
Like, like look at the color wheel and then you look at the opposite colors. Like, what's going to pop? What's going to be your secondary colors? What's going to be, what's going to go opposite the green, you know? So, I pretty much do that in every piece. So it's already in my mind, like, what I did out of the set. And I'm not trying to do a piece. I see people doing these challenges where they use in all 262 markers in one piece. I don't know if I got the patience for that because I banged out this piece in less than like an hour and a half, you know? So I don't know if I had the patience to sit down and do a freaking 262 marker piece. Now the black on these markers, they came out pretty rich. They were flowing good. They were kind of a little bleeding, a little more than what I like. You know, so it was kind of like using a Sharpie, but it just bled a little more on the paper. You know, so I'm going to end up going back in with the gel point pen and just cutting everything back. I'm just, I just like the outlines to look clean at the end of the day. Yeah, you know those Home Depot bins you get those black and yellow ones? I have two of those filled up with scrap paint. Each one of those bins is, I don't know, 25, 35, 40 cans in them. And um, I'm going to the Canna Fest this weekend to paint. I'm thinking in my mind, what do I do? Do I actually plan something out? Go to my paint that I haven't used yet, my new paint pick out a color scheme and actually like plan something out for the first time even though I have in the past but the majority of the times I just go for I just rock with, with whatever I have like the same way how I rock this book I, I just open up those little plastic bins I picked out the color scheme that I like right there on the fly just picked out three four of those little sliding things with the markers that I got holding and I use whatever was in front of me now, I already know if I bring those two crates of scrap, of scrap paint, like my piece regardless is like, I'm gonna be happy with it, you know? But at the same time, I'm like, damn, do I actually go plan something out? And actually, I, I don't know, I'm in a little dilemma. I got like three, four days left to figure it out in my mind, like what I'm gonna do. And plus, like, like I was thinking about, it's going to be a can of fest. That press is going to be performing. It's going to be food trucks, people partying. Do I want to go in and enjoy the festival too? You know, so it's like, do I go prepared? I write these three colors, my fill in. This is a highlight color. This is a shadow color, little design colors, outline, background, border, splash. Maybe go with like 15 cans, 20 cans. But most of the time, I don't like to paint like that. I like to bring two, three crates, and then it's like, oh, look, I got a little highlight this color, bang. A little shine of that, bang. I can add a little of this in my 3D, bang, 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 bang. And then, and then that's how I get fucked over, and I got 100 cans of less than half, and less than half paint, you know? They're going to get used regardless, but I don't know. I still got like a week. No, it's, a, it's on Friday. I got like two, three days to figure this out. Yeah, right here, man. I'm just going in with the black. Let me go back to my tutorial practice. I'm gonna practice with my tutorial over right here. Yeah, so you know, I do a line, then I do another line, connect the border to my extension right there. Then I just, you know, I did some zebra stripes in the 3D. <laughs> you know, that's something I do gotta work on because I seen it. A lot of people actually asking me. Step by step, man. Can you show us the step by step? And I am. The best thing I am. As right now, like I said earlier, man, I'm just learning the YouTube. I've only been on making like full YouTube videos for less than two months. So this is still all brand new to me. You know. But this is what I do. Like, if I wasn't doing this on YouTube right now, like recording it and doing this, I would have been drawing at my desk with YouTube playing in the background. But I don't, I don't got any video game systems. I don't play games. I don't. 
They say that I'm doing art while I'm with my family, with my girl, my kids, you know. That's crazy much it. Every once in a while, I go to the gallery, and I chill in the art gallery, or I do a Friday night market, or I do some live painting somewhere. You know, back in the days, I used to think when I do these black books or pieces, like everything gotta be perfect. You know, oh yeah, there. I like that right there. Those, those little white bubbles I'm doing in 3D. But at the end of the day, it's all an illusion. I got like a thousand fuck ups and mistakes in this piece. Like things ain't blending correctly here. The proportion and the outline is not the same everywhere. But if you keep it consistent to a point that who's really gonna look at your piece that close? Like, oh look, he left one little millimeter of paint didn't really touch right there. You know? Now I think that's a downfall sometimes of people. It's been my downfall before. You know, because I just wanted it too perfect. And shit ain't perfect, man. You just gotta enjoy what you're doing. Have fun. Do some graph, draw, paint. You know, don't take, don't take this black book too serious neither. Enjoy your time with it. You know, and like I said earlier, this is the first Louis piece I've done. Like I should have been done one of these. You know, that was like, that was my father's nickname. You know, I like that right there. You see, I started coming in with the white. Cause I ain't really like the way some of them blends was looking. But they bled through and they, that's one thing about these markers, they juicy. Like when the markers are brand new and they'll bleed a lot too when you hit the paper if you're heavy handed. So as uh, so as I'm going along, it didn't really blend through too good too good on certain spots cause the, cause the marker kept on bleeding through the paper. So I just come in with the white right there and I gave it like a little separation. And it gave it a nice little funky look to it. And then you're gonna see what I'm gonna do after that. I'm gonna come in with this little color right here, with this with this beige color. And I start giving a, a shadow on those highlights where they bled in the first place. I was like, oh damn, yeah, it's gonna make a pop right there. Bang, bang. There we go. And there I go being a hypocrite. Look at that, I go back in with the Sharpie gel pen and I go through the, almost the whole outline, just come back on corners and sharpen up my lines so the piece look a little more cleaner. I wanna thank Louis again for asking me to do this exchange with him. I can't wait to see what he's doing for me. Uh, I get to screenshot that, put that on my Instagram. You know, I got a couple of fools that that my name over the years has really inspired me to do certain things, you know? So I appreciate that, Louie. And um, I want to thank everybody that's been showing me love in the comments on IG. I appreciate that. And I'm just going to keep on continuing doing these black books, painting these walls, and putting y'all on to my stills. You know, no days off.